So you're all very, very welcome here to Holy Family Mission in Glencomer House here. It's great to see you all and great to see uh, that spark of joy in your eyes as we embark, as you embark on this epic journey, right? This epic journey to help people discover the love of God. To help people discover, like there is nothing greater. There is nothing better. There is no more lofty goal and there is no more important goal than bringing people back to God. Why? Because that's how they get to heaven. And when they get there, they're there forever. They're sorted forever. They're happy forever. So there's no more to do. Once they get there, all is, all is good and all is done. Uh, so like that's, that's whatever other things we accomplish down here will eventually pass. You know, maybe some might, might last a little longer, but eventually everything we do here passes. But... What we invest in eternity lasts forever. That's just incredible. And we get to do that. You and I get to do that. Like We get to actually help people discover who God is. And then all, of, all that comes with them, the, <clears throat> the consolation, the joy, the hope, the healing, all that comes from a lived relationship with the Lord, we get to be part of that story. It's quite incredible. It's quite incredible. I think there's one little obstacle there are, there are numerous obstacles. We're going to focus on one today. One obstacle that, that tends to get in people's way when it comes to this whole, you know, witnessing to other people. Uh, in the late 80s, when I was in primary school, everyone, when it came to the problem of the premiership, everyone wanted to follow Newcastle, because Newcastle were doing great. No one remembers that. <laughs> right. Then that was followed up uh, fairly swiftly by Liverpool. Liverpool, who were on the top of the... Premiership for quite some time. <clears throat> then once the kind of 90s hit, then it was Man United. It was just Man United like for just ages. Right, okay. And lo and behold, like they've been knocked off the pedestal now for quite some time and all sorts of other teams. Anyway, you've got your Chelsea's and your Man City's. And the whole lot. Okay, point being, at any one of those stages in school, primary school or secondary school, everyone wanted to follow the winning team. It's kind of obvious, right? Everyone wants to, be, everyone wants to get behind the team that was on top. And God help us if you were a Spurs fan, right? Because they were practically, I think maybe they were on top back in the 50s, I don't know. But like it's quite some, quite some time back. And the slagging, now it's again, it's healthy slagging. It's, it's you know, there was nothing, it wasn't bullying. But, but those who support these other teams that weren't doing so well, they had to know their stats, they had to know their facts, and they had to get good at arguing and debating. You know, and finding some sort of a positive something or other, uh, some sort of a positive aspect of, of, of their team in order to back up why they still, in this day and age, follow Spurs uh, or Arsenal, uh, whoever it was. Okay, so it was, again, a, a kind of a healthy exercise, in a way, in learning to be different and celebrate it. Learning to be different and celebrate it, but in a positive way. So for most of us, then, as we grew up, uh, <clears throat> hit your teenage years, hit your early 20s, and in, in that phase of your life, there are some changes. You go to college or you start working, and uh, there's, there's you know, lots of social life and in, you know, maybe uh, trips here and there. But when does life really change for people? When does, when does, when does the greatest change happen in people's lives in, in, in that kind of phase, would you say, from your kind of 20s to mid-30s? What's the one of the, again, it's not, it doesn't happen to everyone, but generally speaking, for most people, what's this key change? What event completely changes their lives? Marriage. Okay? Completely changes your life. So you go from being a person who is relatively carefree and just goes wherever they want and works wherever they want and moves and goes on holidays and decides last minute to let's go to, I don't know, Italy. Great. You can't do that with four children. <laughs> you know, you don't decide, you can't even decide to go visit your mother who lives a half an hour away, you know, with 10 minutes notice. Never mind, go to Italy. Uh, so this, this, a huge change happens. Once you get married, and especially once you get married and have kids, that, that completely changes your life. So, originally, you were a carefree, carefree happy person who used to socialise a lot and go to matches all the time and was involved in all sorts of clubs and associations and groups and all sorts of things. And then you get married, and a lot of that changes. Probably most of it changes. So you're now, you're now different to what you were. Okay. Is that a 
good thing? I mean, is that something you should celebrate? Is that something you should embrace? Or is it something you should resist? We should embrace it. You kind of you have to. But do you, do you want to embrace it? Well, yeah. I mean, you love your husband, you love your kids, you love your wife. Uh, so you want to now in, embrace this part of your life and the things that you used to do, they're in your past. I mean, they were, they were grand, hopefully. They weren't sinful, hopefully. Um, but they're, they're, that, that phase is over and now we've moved on. So I'm different. I'm different, but I'm celebrating it. Why? Because I want to kind of rub it in the noses of people who are single? Because I want to rub it in the noses of those who don't have kids? Because I want to show people that I'm better than them? Those, those thoughts don't even cross your mind, right? You're not doing anything, any of this, to look better in the, in, in the eyes of people. You're doing all of this, why? Um, I'm, I'm, this is a, I'm trying to get to the point quickly here, but why do we do this? Why do, you, why do you allow your habits to change? Why do you allow the way you use your money to change? How, why do you allow the way that you use your free time to change because of your family? There's a key word there. It begins with L. <laughs> Love. So you have now changed most aspects of your life because you love your family. Because you love. Because you love. And this, this, is, this is the key thing when it comes to the Lord and following the Lord, especially in contemporary Ireland, where back in the day, 60s, 70s, 80s, probably into most of the 90s, following the Lord and going to Mass was the norm. And everyone knew the family on the street that didn't go to Mass. And I remember in the cathedral in Thurles, where I went to Mass, there was a, 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 an area behind the, the, sac the, the sanctuary where all the dodgy lads used to go and sit. You know, they, 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 they all, they kind of, because it was kind of hidden from the rest of the, of the church, they'd all go sit there, you know what I mean? They'd poke each other during Mass, and, uh -huh. and it, was, it was terrible. You know, no one, don't go sitting around the back of the sanctuary, that's where all the dodgy lads sit. Now they just don't go. But they went. In the 90s, they were dodgy, <laughs> but they went. They actually still went to Mass. All right? So things have radically changed in our culture. And in order to understand that in order to be relevant to today's needs we must embrace the fact that we are going to be different we're going to be different as in the fact that we now follow christ makes us different but of course do we do that now because we want to rub the noses of the pagans in it because we want to look better than others no, it's got nothing to do with that. So be very careful when people think that that's why this whole, I don't want to be a holy Joe kind of expression thing. This isn't about me looking good in front of anyone. I love the Lord. That's what motivates me. I don't think I'm better than you, or I'm not trying to be better than anyone else. I'm trying to make, not trying to make anyone else feel bad. It's got actually nothing to do with you at all. It's got no offense to you, but it's got nothing, it's, just, it's not all about you. I love the Lord. That's what I'm witnessing to. That's what I'm doing. That's why I do this. Why we do youth groups and prayer groups and, and choirs and pilgrimages. Because we love the Lord. It's not to make ourselves look good or make anyone else look bad. So it was, it was to kind of, kind of get back to basics when it comes to ministry and outreach. Why do we do this? We are motivated by love. Love of the Lord. And we are different. In today's culture, you follow the Lord, that makes you different. So get used to it. You may, and you may, you may have watched some of the, the Chosen <clears throat> not sure if everyone picks up on this uh, at the beginning of The Chosen where the lady goes starts singing um, there's a load of fish swimming one direction right and then you see one blue fish turn and start swimming against the other fish and then as the, as the credits come up along more and more fish start turning blue and swimming against the other fish now it's not to be against them but they're swimming against the tide right that's the idea of being being chosen, it changes you. And then you're different. We then swim against the tide. Why? Because we want to be better than everyone else? Because we want everyone else to feel bad? Because we want to rub everyone else's nose in it? Oh, what's this? Oh, yeah, it's of course the all important expression ram your, your, your faith down their throats. It's got nothing to do with your throats, don't even know where your throat is, haven't even looked at you. It's got nothing to do with you. It's got nothing to do with you. I love the Lord. If that's something you want to be part of, 
here are our various groups and opportunities. If that's something you, not something you want, come on to do with me. I'm not ramming anything anywhere. You know, no more than if I was a big Man United fan, I'm ramming my beliefs down your throat. No, I just like that particular team. You know, I mean, people have to be a little less, again, we have to be kind of aware of the kind of things people might say. And just to understand, or kind of to, maybe to hear it vocalized, this is why we do what we do. We're not, we don't consider ourselves better, and we're not trying to embarrass anyone, or, or we do this because we love the Lord. And if you're here, that's a sign. That's a sign right now already that you, you love the Lord. You mightn't necessarily phrase it that way, but you do. You do. You come to Mass, you're willing to give your time at his service. That's love of the Lord put into practice. So when, we, when you go out into your, into your parishes and when you're uh, trying to listen to, to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you and how he can use your gifts and your abilities and also your past to serve him now as the Holy Spirit there is working through you, we do this because we love the Lord. It's very simple. All for love of you, Lord. All for love of you. So win, lose, or draw, Lord, all the glory to you. I did this for you. I did this for you. And that helps just cut through all of the, the negativity and the resistance and all the kind of thing that we're going to experience because we're different and because we now swim against the tide. We're not trying to be antagonistic, but the ways of the Lord are truth. The ways of the Lord are love. The ways of the Lord do actually bring joy. It's sad to see that our understanding of, of joy and fulfillment in this world is, is, is quite superficial. And we know where it leads. I mean, you can see where it leads. There was a, a, a song back in the 90s, and uh, one of the lines was, the weekend has landed, all that exists now are pubs, clubs, drugs, and parties. I remember, uh, yeah, that's the song I used to listen to, unfortunately. I never got involved in that whole scene, but like, this was the attitude. The weekend has landed, all that exists now, this is all we have. This is what we've worked for. We now have our free time, let's go. Good, and that maybe sounds like fun when you're 18, 19. I think by the time you hit 20, it should start getting kind of predictable and boring already. But some people don't have any alternative. They don't have anything else to do. So come 25, 28, they're still doing it. Because what else is there? What else is there? What else can I do like, to, to give me a sense of fulfillment or joy? or What can I, else can I do to fill that void in my heart, what else can I do? What else is there? What do you have to offer? What's the Holy Spirit doing in you and through you to help heal all these wounded hearts? We do what we do because we love him. Win, lose, or draw, all glory be to you. Amen.